All right, we're going to go ahead and talk about perimeter and area in the coordinate plane for geometry. And so in this uh, lesson, we talk about the different types of polygons and knowing that a polygon is a closed shape with straight sides and um, um, sides that come together at points at which we could call vertices. Okay, and so I'm just kind of trying to draw a more random polygon, but it still turns out to be an upside down house there. Kind of crazy. But anyway, sides. Okay, so sides going along like this, and they connect what we call vertices. All right, um, there we go. Okay, and so when we're dealing with this, um, a polygon is more of a general name, but um, we have more specific names. So if a side, if a shape has three sides, we call it a triangle. Four sides, quadrilateral. Five, a pentagon. Six, a hexagon. Seven, hepta. Eight, um, octagon. Nine, nonagon. Ten, decagon. Eleven, or excuse me, twelve, dodecagon. Um, I know, where's eleven? Well, I'm sure it has some special name that I just don't use. Um, and so after 12, we we uh, just continue with um, the side. We just call it an anagon, n-gon. So I say, hey, if it has 14 sides, let's call it a 14 side agon. Which, once again, I'm sure it has some specific name. But one that I don't know and uh, I haven't put in time to learning because just wouldn't have it, haven't used it. So if it says 14 sides, we just say there's 14 sides. If it has 15, we'll say it has 15 sides. And we can use a gone at the end because it, you know, makes it sound like all these others if you really want to. All right? So anyway, these are the ones you really need, the types of, or the names of polygons you really need to know. They're helpful when you're, when you're working through them and uh, that way you know the actual shapes that they're referencing. The other thing we need to know is, um, the words convex and concave. If I have a polygon, and if you're having a hard time drawing polygons, just put some dots, connect the, connect the dots. It's kind of a, uh, you think of it this way, when you were younger, they give you all these pictures where you had to connect dots and stuff, and um, you think of that as like a mathematical ploy against, against you trying to get you ready for drawing polygons later, you know? So this has, this shape has one, two, three, four, five sides. Okay, and you'll notice if I were to take and um, draw from any one vertice to another vertice a a line that is not a side. So obviously, if I go from this vertice to this vertice, that would be a side. So I'm not going to draw that one. And no matter what what um, vertice I come out of, maybe I take that one and draw that one, and maybe that one and that one. Okay, notice all of those lines lie within the shape. Those lines, by the way, are called diagonals. Okay, and so diagonals are two, are sides that connect two vertices, or excuse me, a line that connects two vertices, but is not a side. Okay, a line that connects two vertices of a polygon but is not a side. Okay, since those diagonals are contained within the shape, this is called a convex shape. In fact, this is a convex pentagon because it has five sides. Now, if I were, let's go ahead and go one, two, uh, three, four, and let's go ahead and move a point inside like that, five. So now, I once again have a pentagon, five sides, but when I draw my diagonals this time, so let's say I go there and there, those are both inside, and I go here, and it's kind of tough to get it out to there, but it's still there, but this diagonal right here is on the outside of the shape. If a diagonal lies on the outside of the shape, it is called a convex shape, or a concave, excuse me. So 
the diagonal lies on the outside of the shape. It is called a concave shape. So, in fact, this is called a concave pentagon. Okay? I like to think of it as, you know, uh, somehow this got, this, this piece got pushed inward. Okay? And now it's become this. I know it's more the violent way to think about it, but um, maybe it got kicked in or something, and now it's been caved in. Another way to think about it I've heard reference is like it's like a little cave into the shape. It's a it's a cave, you know, if someone was out here camping they they're in a cave. Okay. However you want to learn it. I, I learned, you know, it's been caved in some way, but whatever helps you remember it. Um uh the diagonal test is the test that you'll see a lot in the textbook. All right. So we know two of those terms. Okay. Now, one of the things we'll have to do is to uh, be able to find area and perimeter within the within the coordinate plane. So if I were to say um, plot three points A, B, and C, so we go to four, five, and call that A, and four negative A, and call that B, and five negative five negative A, and call that C. Okay, so we have this shape it happens to be three points. So it forms a triangle, and this particular triangle happens to be that, once again, if you follow any of my videos, I for some reason have a hard time drawing. Lines that connect points. Maybe I didn't draw enough, do enough dot to dots as a kid. Okay. Um, but anyway, if you have a, a triangle where the lines are straight vertical and horizontal, like CB being a horizontal line and AB being a straight vertical line, you just count up the side lengths to find the perimeter. So this length plus this length plus this length would give us our our perimeter. So in terms of this, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. We have 9. And on this side, we're going from negative 8 all the way up to 5. So negative 8 to 0 is 8 plus another 5 is 13. Okay, or we could count the boxes like I just did over here. But 9 and 13, well... This side from C to B, side CB, is a little tougher. You have to use the distance formula. Okay, so you either use the distance formula, um, or if I already have a picture, I just use the Pythagorean theorem. I think of it as A squared plus B squared equals C squared. That's Pythagorean theorem. Distance formula looks a little more intense. But you could use that as well, this being x2, y2, or x1, y1, whatever you want to, whichever one you want to label as your 1s and your 2s. And you could plug that in. I'm just going to say, hey, look, I already know what a is. It's 9. 9 squared is 81. Okay. And I already know what b is. b is 13, and 13 squared is 169. And so if I do that, that ends up giving me 81 plus 169, or a grand total of, well, the 1, that's 170. And then we add another 80 to it, that gives us 250. 250. All right. So you can say 250 is equal to C squared. And really, that's what the way I should have wrote that. And which means C is equal to the square root of 250. And on my picture, I just show it like that. There's 250. And this is root 250. That way, uh, A squared, B squared, and C squared. And if you were to plug all that in up here, please note that would be 4 minus negative 5 squared plus um, 5 minus negative 8 squared. Okay, and that would end up giving you 9 squared or 81 again and 13 squared. Okay, or 169. So same thing. 
and then you end up taking the square root and you get root 250. But uh, square root of 250 should always be used to simplifying it. Uh, if it says give the exact answer, square root 250, you're looking for perfect squares that go into it. In this case, a perfect square that I know goes into it because 250 is 25, and that goes in 10 times. So root 25 by root 10. Note that the perfect square is 25. Root of 25 is 5. And the root of 10 just stays as 10. And there's no perfect square that goes into 10, so we call our answer as 5 root 10. So C is equal to 5 root 10. So my perimeter is equal to 13 plus 9, those two sides, plus 5 root 10. Now, the 5's counting how many root 10's you have. 13 and 9 are just units, so 13 plus 9 is a grand total of 22 plus 5 root 10. Now, you can't combine the 22 and the 5 because, once again, the 5 is counting your root 10's. So your solution for perimeter, perimeter is equal to 22 plus 5 root 10. That's the exact answer. If you're around it, that would be 5 times about 3, so 15, about 37-ish. Okay, I'm not going to calculate that out. Now, if I was to find the area of it, I'm going to go ahead and do that over here. I'm running out of room. But area is a lot easier. Remember area of a triangle, 1 half base times height. And your base and height always come together at your right angle. So if I'm focusing over here, my 9 and my 13 are my base and my height. And then we multiply by 1 half. So 10 13s is 130. So 9 13s is 113 less than that. Is A 13 less than that? So 117 times 1 half. And half of 100 is 50, and half of 17 is 8.5. So 58.5. That is my area. And really, that would be reported in square units, and perimeter would be reported in just linear units. All right, that's all there is to it, area and perimeter in the coordinate plane.